I'm live, I'm live, I'm live. I'm alive. Ooh, I'm alive. All right, we're gonna continue on to this Ezekiel chapter 37 because I just realized that whatever my Bible scripture reading appointment doesn't start until 30 minutes more. So I'm like, oh, okay. Why did I even sign off? Oh, okay. Anyway, this continuation, if you listen to the first 32 minutes of the last video, um, I obviously I started with the prayer and I got up to verse 19. So the first two parts from verse one through verse um, 14, I focused on that this is the resurrection of the dead being gathered at the conclusion, at the ending of the greater exodus, okay? Because it's not going to be by man's strength, man's will, or man's power that we're going to be brought back to the land. It's going to be by his Ruach, and this is how he's going to do it. By his Ruach, we will be gathered. Yes, we'll have to go out into the wilderness. Just like the children of Israel went out into the wilderness in the first exodus. But by his Ruach, because, you know, we're talking about people from throughout. We're talking about those of Israel throughout the whole four corners of the world. OK, being gathered back to the land. That doesn't happen by man's strength or by power. It only happens by his Ruach. And we see how many times you read in Ezekiel uh, chapter 37, 1 through 14. How many times you see Ruach, the breath, OK, being mentioned, Ruach. Many times. So this confirms that it's going to be by his spirit that we gather back into the land. We're going to be in the wilderness. And the greater exodus is more so about being in the wilderness, being outside of the influence of Babylon and Egypt and Sodom and Amora, you know, the world systems um, for that three and a half year time frame to get the world and that of the enemy purged out of Israel. And in that process, there will be those who will be slain, who will die. Okay, we see that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 9, when it says, Come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe on these slain so that they live. Okay, I mentioned that we learn already in the Brit Kadeshah, that is in the New Testament, that the dead and Messiah will rise up first. This just shows you prophetically where they get that from. The dead and Messiah will rise up first. Here, they will rise up first, those who are slain. For the testimony of Yehoshua and for keeping Yah's commandments. These are the first ones who are slain. The dead and Messiah will be raised up first. And then those who are alive, okay, that's what we see in verse 21. Those who are still alive will be caught up with them and all will be gathered back into the land. Okay, so as I mentioned, verse 1 through 14. in Ezekiel chapter 37 has everything to do with the resurrection of the dead in Messiah being brought back to life. Remember, we talked about the corruptible versus incorruptible body. The incorruptible body does not have blood. The incorruptible body has bone and flesh filled with light and quickened by the walk. Okay, that's it. So the dead inside, this is what they get at this particular resurrection. All right. Um, and they become a very exceedingly great army. We see that in verse 10. I'm just summarizing what I did in the first video. Um, they come out of the graves, came, right? And uh, they shall live and then they'll be settled in the land, okay? In their own land as he has spoken. Okay, so I went through verse 15 and to verse, uh, from verse 15 through 19, I focus at this prophecy is the culminating of the kingdom becoming one the two houses the two kingdoms becoming one as two sticks become one stick a one male and a female become one in flesh and as i said this is a prophecy regarding yehoshua's wedding and his bride okay as i said as i mentioned before you know from all the teachings i've done this is about the one woman bride and then afterwards there will be a culmination of many many unions, many bridal marital unions being made that Yehoshua will be attending. He will be dancing with all these brides, celebrating with the, the kings, the soon-to-be kings who will marry their queens, okay? Because it's going to be one big wedding celebration after a wedding celebration, okay? It's going to be a lot. 
all right? And the whole, and then the fulfillment of Isaiah 62, the whole land will be married, will be Beulah, because literally everybody who's in that land is going to have a eternal soulmate, will be Beulah, will be united with an eternal soulmate, okay? So just as it has been said, so it will be, okay? And that's, you can see that is Isaiah chapter 62. So anyway, um, so we have this resurrection of the dead. Um, I don't know the time frame. It could be overlapping, but we know that before everybody's gathered in the land into where Israel becomes one, this wedding has to take place as well. The two sticks, the stick of Yosef representing Naphtali because Naphtali is the hidden Yosef in the hand of Ephraim being joined to Yehuda, which is already in the hand of the Heavenly Father because the stick of Yehuda is Yehoshua. Being in his companions, like the disciples, coming together, all right, and that unites the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Yehuda, and the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, back into one united kingdom of Israel, all right. So that's verses uh, 16 through 19. Now, oh, I'm sorry, 16 through 20. Let me correct myself, 16 through 20. All right, and the Heavenly Father is going to, as I mentioned in another video, he's going to conduct that particular wedding. All right, verse 21. Um, and speak to them, thus says the Adon, Yehovah. See, I'm taking the children of Israel from among the Gentiles, wherever they have gone, and shall gather them from all around and shall bring them into the land. All right, so now it's not just those who are dead, it's also those who are still alive will be caught up, okay? But those who are dead... He will deal with first, and then those who are alive, they will catch. He will catch them up and bring them back to the land. Okay, they'll take over the land, and then obviously, yeah, Yehoshua's kingdom will be established throughout the whole earth. Uh, verse twenty-two, and I shall make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one sovereign shall be sovereign over them all, and let and I'm sorry, and let them no longer be two nations. And let them no longer be divided into two reigns or two kingdoms. Uh, verse 23. And they shall no longer defile themselves with their idols, nor with their filthiness, nor with any of their transgressions. And I shall save them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned. And I shall cleanse them and they shall be my people and I be their Elohim. Verse 24. While Dawid, my servant, is sovereign over them, and they shall all have one shepherd and walk in my write rulings and guard my laws and shall do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Yaakov, my servant, where their fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell in it, they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant Dawid shall be, be their prince, which is Nasi, like a ruler, a governor. Their Nasi forever. And I shall make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant, it is with them and I shall place them and increase them and shall make, I mean, shall place my mikdash, that means tabernacle, in their midst forever and my dwelling place or temple, actually mikdash would be temple, and my dwelling place shall be over them and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And the Gentiles shall know that I, Yehovah, am making Israel kodesh, okay, kodesh, when my mikdash, that means temple, is in their midst forever. All right. So he's going to make a covenant of peace. Remember that covenant of peace actually comes through the kingdom marriage alliance between Yehoshua and the bride. All right. Um, it is actually, there's a hidden um, word. If you take the all the four names of Naphtali's sons in the order that is mentioned in the scriptures, you take all four names and I'll, I might do probably do a separate video. It's really easy. But you could take all four names of Naphtali's sons. If you put them in correct order, it reads, well, in the order that it's written in the scriptures, it reads, Yah will lot protected or hidden work of shalom, of peace. This is what this culminates to. This covenant of peace is established in that particular union, that it will bring a union of peace, not just to Israel, but to the whole entire world. All right. Um, and like I said, this particular gathering that starts in verse 21 is for those who are also alive, right? Not just for those who died that like we saw in verse um, 1 through 14, but these are for also those who are alive after the ones who are who were dead 
were brought back to life first, the wedding and then the living are caught up. So the wedding happens before the catching up of the living. Okay, the wedding happens before the actual um, uh, what we call the um, wheat harvest happens, which those who are alive are caught up. So if you look at the order of things, you'll see this is what how it's going to play out um, to culminate to conclude the greater exodus. Hallelujah. Um, and with that, I'm going to say shalom, shalom, and shalom. If you have any questions, um, you want me to go through more scriptural details? Maybe you feel like I don't have time to look at all those other videos you're talking about. Then just let me know, and I'll I'll summarize this with those extra scriptures that I was hinting at, like Isaiah chapter 62, uh, the Testament of Naphtali. Uh, let's see. Yeah, those other scriptures, okay? Um, I'll make my effort to do that. But I just, like I said, I don't want it to be, I, my videos can be very long. So I'm just trying to, so for people's attention sake, I'm just trying to keep it, you know, not brief, brief, but concise enough where, you know, you can actually focus and be edified by it. So with that, I say shalom, uh, shalom, and shalom. Shalom.